Yeah. Sure. Oh, what, what I wanted to tell you is that the Negro in America is, uh, is definitely not respected, not respected in any kind of way. Uh, when you look at the Negro and the white man, it's constantly, might we say, terrorizing the black man. His terrorism is something psychological to the Negro. I mean, you have to look at, at the spectrum of, of hatred that is here. That's when, I'm, when I moved to France, I was getting more respect in France than I was here, but I had to come back because of the outright racism. If you understand me, my Angelo, I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying to be ridiculous, but I'm trying to be in contextual in what I'm saying. No, no, no I, I totally, I totally understand what you're saying because it's a shame. It is such a shame that a beautiful black man like yourself has to go to France to escape your own country that you live in, okay? Because of racism, because someone of another skin color than you looks at you and says, you're not worthy of life. You're not worthy of the same life and opportunity that I have because I have white skin and you have black skin. That's, that's, that's so sad. It's so unfortunate. I don't, it is, I don't understand. It's so sad. You're, you're such a beautiful black man. And it's so I, it's, it's, it, it's, it, I feel it's never, it's never going to end. It's never going to end, especially if, if they begin to deflect, deflect. The problem of Negro, it seems to be, we have to be the teachers of white uh, supremacy. We have to be the teachers when uh, the solution is actually for them to, to, to decide. But we always have to sort of take a psychological burden to become their teachers, which is definitely ridiculous. D ridiculous. Also, it is dumbfounded that the Negro has to take on so many jobs. First, the psychological job of teaching them not to treat us like animals, but you also see that they don't even understand that they treat us like animals. They are almost mutants, if you really think about it. I've written many books on it, and it doesn't seem like they have read the books, especially the Negroes around here, walking around, selling out, might you say. Well, it's, it's very, very fitting that you would say what you're saying, because I've written many poems Many poems. That's where Phenomenal Woman came from. That's where Phenomenal Woman came from, is because as a black woman, not only am I getting, getting racism from the white man and the white woman, but I'm also I'm going home to an angry black man who's beating on me because the racism that he's facing in the streets, the racism that he's facing, he's not taking it out on me. So I had to write Phenomenal Woman so I can remind myself, so I can remind all the beautiful black women out there that they are phenomenal women. Whether you know it or not in your household or when you go to the job or you, wherever you're going, you have to understand, look within, look within yourself and be your own cheerleader, okay? Okay, Jim. Yeah. It's, very, it's very interesting, you know, might say, that that's when you're writing your poems and the prose in between the lines, lots of times the message is, is lost, can we say? It's lost, but we can't really look at the psychological psychoanalysis of this. But poems sometimes does not seem to come into society, you see. Um, when you're reading, sometimes the best way to hide something from anybody, any Negro, is to put it in a book. To put it in a book, and that is what conceals the history, conceals that which separates and juxtaposes the intelligence of the Negro, which we have to continue because my skin, my skin is what they have to get past, but they can't get past my skin. So they, how are they going to reach the intelligence of me if they continue to judge me by my skin? It's almost an impossible task, but through poetry, I figure you can figure it out. 
Well, James, I, I have to say, I want to, to petition you to lower your anger. You have to release that anger, you beautiful man. You have to release that anger because they're using it against you. I don't know. Even, I, I don't. Even, even in the way, even, even in the way you're smoking that cigarette, you're smoking that cigarette because it's a white cigarette. It is a white cigarette. White cigarette but you are chewing the butt of that cigarette. You're chewing the butt, which it's means psychologically. Because like, listen to me. You have to listen. You have to listen. So you, you have to listen. listen. You have to listen. You are chewing the butt of that white cigarette, which means subconsciously, psychologically, you truly, you truly want to bite the ass meat of a white person. You want to chew their asses off. <laughs> Dude, wow. we pulled it off. I think we pulled it off, son. We pulled it off. Hey, yo, I think we pulled it off. I hey, think we nigga. pulled it off. I was laughing midway through. <laughs> But I was containing it in my in my core. <laughs> hey, Tasha.